all in all. Well, I'm here. Bit of messing about. No, Joe. So, have we got a few people awake? Let's have a little look. My Fred. No, Fred. No, Joe. He's coming. Morning, Clive. Morning, you can morning. say, morning, Joe. Joe's here now. Morning, Shay. Bit cold in here today. Got me out on, as you can see. We've lost the camera. Why? Because the iPhone won't connect. I um, uh, morning, Baz. Morning, Lee. Morning, Steve. Morning, Fred. Sound? We've got sound. It's bouncing. No, it's all right, John. Joe's now showing up. Great picture and sound. Thank you, Pat. Whoever's got no sound, turn your speakers on. Or your hearing aid up, whichever. Morning, Trevor. Norbert, good morning. Ah, Michael Stratton, good morning. It's getting incredibly warm now, so I think I can remove me hat. Might move it in a minute. Morning, Derek. We have sound. Good job. Morning, Derek. Wheel up. Good morning. Jay, if you do that, you'll have a text about 100 miles long saying morning to everybody. Morning, Steve. Ah, uh, Fred, your problem, earring aid. Morning, Philip. How are you? Morning, Hans. Morning, Simon. Morning, Malcolm. Right, our mornings are over. Morning, Roger. So, we're about to start. We're about to start on another 10 o'clock and it's Saturday. Another week has gone by. Another week has gone by. Well, tales of woe this week. The broadband engineers never turned up, so there's no cable installed. Um, we've got some scaffolding up. We've started painting the house. Uh, we've got... The people that are renting the scaffold up didn't turn up. 100 and... Well, I don't know. 150 metres of timber to paint. So you can imagine what that's like with me with paint. I've got white paint going everywhere. And so is Joe, because he's up there as well. So we've got paint brushes going and away we go. So what we're going to do this morning is we're going to work a little in reverse. Uh, you'll see why in a minute. So morning, YB. Um, morning, James. We... Um, I'm Pat. So I just went here beside me. I've always said good morning to Pat. Uh, I'm not saying good morning to Pat twice. I've already okay. said morning, oh, Pat. Morning, Pat. Morning, Pat. Pat, good morning. Morning. Good all morning. Right. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Morning. morning, David. So, this hat's going now. Oh, if Mike turns up, tell him I wore the hat. So, oh, it's messed me hair up. Look. What I'm going to do with it. Um, what we're going to do this morning is a little bit more like a proper... Uh, club demonstration because I've had to do a here it is and here we're gonna go um ah oh, Mike Walt good morning I had me out on look there so I've had me out on that way around so you can see the head so you can see it's that hat and not another green hat that's been knitted but it's coming off now Mike I've had it on for half an hour it's too hot um so we're gonna do a little bit of we're going to do this, then we'll do the turning, then we'll come back to this. You'll see why in a minute. Uh, what I am going to do is just show you the bowl we were doing last week. I've been sanding, so let's come back to a camera angle so you can see the bowl. That there. And we'll come side on, that might give us a better view. There. 
So it's been sanded and it's had a couple of coats of finishing oil at the moment. Um, it will be buffed uh, and get some oil oil. So I'll build up the oil over the next week or two. Uh, until I'm happy with the sort of sheen that I get to it. I don't want a high gloss, but I want a bit of a sheen. Um, so, there's our bowl. It's not been abandoned. Uh, and if I take it off of the lathe... Now, I don't normally take things out of chucks when I'm going to finish, but here we will, because it's just oiling. We'll put that over there. So, there's our bowl there it went through the sandblaster purely to remove the dirt and debris in this uh, pipping um, so that was done now the crack run through here and realistically with the way the bark or the inclusion is this sort of burry spiky stuff it doesn't really show up too much, but when I've oiled it, if I think that it's showing up too much, that might get a coat of gild or something. I haven't made my mind up yet, but it is being worked on, and it is going to be finished. So let's put that to one side. Don't drop it, or it will break. Let's put that there. Safely. On the side, it is. Safely. So, if I come back to the old overhead us oh not that one that camera ain't there that camera's disappeared where we've not been able to get uh webcams uh, they're now available so i've ordered the couple um i've been using my iphone but the iphone's got an app and the app sometimes it sees it sometimes it don't today was it don't want to see it thanks pat it was a nice Normally, I wouldn't mess around too much, uh, saving bits of wood like that. But it was such a nice piece of wood, it's time to try and save something and time not to. And in my opinion, it was a nice... Oh, I had plans to colour it, and I didn't colour it because I think it's so nice. I thought, well... So, what we're going to do is we're going to make a pot today. Uh, and this is one I've done earlier. If I get that there. And there's a lid there so we're a little round pot now the reason we're doing it in stages is i've burnt textured the pot you'll see why in just a minute um and that takes that little pot last night took the best <coughs> part of an hour so there so we've got our little pot now what we're going to do is we're going to use some copper and this is uh, Verde uh, it's something Martin did a while ago it comes from America and then he stopped uh, I keep thinking do I get hold of him and import it I'm not sure um, but I found another one that I'm going to start playing with but I haven't played with it yet so I don't want to use that today because it might go wrong um, we don't want to see my demos go wrong, do we? No, of course we don't. So, we've got a copper. Now, the reason we're doing it in two stages is we have to cover the wood in the copper, and me probably, uh, and then we let it dry, and then we come back to it. So, all we're going to do is paint this with this copper, like so, and we just give it a coating all the way around. Now you can see in some areas there, there's little flat spots. Uh, that's done intentionally. The texturing is just random on this. Um, because the idea is it looks, well, it's supposed to look like something that's just been dug up. Uh, so we paint this on. I thought you'd miss it if I didn't paint. So I thought, well, I'll paint it live. So you can see me get covered even with a paintbrush. I'm quite good at that. 
I've got that on the camera right. There we go. So let's get that there. And we just work the paint in as we go around. I don't really want to see any of the uh, blackened burn mark pieces, so I've got to make sure it's covered. That's there. That's the little lid done. So get that in there. Get that in there. And the other thing we're going to do today uh, with the turning to make it a little bit different is I'm going to use the uh, Simon Oak quick release system and explain that throughout the demo. Uh, so for you tooling freaks you can have a look at a quick release system uh, something I play with now and again but first we got to get the paint on covers on quite quick it's only a little pot it's nothing major take long while with big pot so get that in there work it in Let's work it in, baby. Get it in there. Now what I might... Mm, what I was going to say, what I might do is put it in the chuck to paint it so I don't get it all over my fingers, but then I've got to take it out of the chuck and I, so that's not going to work too well. Get that in there. Get it in. Splash it on all over. Anybody remember that advert? Splash it on all over. Name that advert. Mick, I could have used a five inch brush if I'd had one. Got a four inch brush, but that's covered in white gloss. No, white undercoat at the moment, no gloss. Not been glossing yet. We've done one section. One section of a long job. Right. I am going to put that in the chuck, I think. Mm -mm -mm. If I can find the chuck key. <laughs> More paint. Someone said use gloves. Use gloves, yeah. Gloves don't know you. I have got loads of gloves and I should use gloves and I keep meaning to use gloves and every time I start painting I forget about the gloves and I remember it when I look at my hands at the end of it and I think why don't I put the gloves on? I'll tell you why I don't put the gloves on because I can sell them to someone. <laughs> Not really. Can't get gloves at the moment, they're a bit scarce. That worked in there, we're nearly there. It's nearly Christmas. <laughs> oh, Steve answered the question to your splash it on all over. Oh, yeah. So it was Brute 33, he said the downside. Uh, of that ad was if you followed it, uh, followed it you smelt like Brute 33. Yeah, oh yeah, well we used to, all wear, used to all wear Brute back in the early 70s. Couldn't go out on a Friday night without your Brute on. God. It was like a babe magnet.
that and our flares. Yeah, those were the days, eh? Loom trousers, long hair. You won't believe this. Back then, I had a perm. Yeah, it's all curly. Yeah, probably what did it—the perm made me hair fall out. So any of you that are a little bit younger, don't bother having your hair perm because it all falls out later on. Might have been the chemicals they used back then. I don't think they cared. No health and safety. Right, look at this. Nearly there. Nice copper pot. Bit like being on holiday when you go to the copper kettle, isn't it? For your fish and chips. Now this bit would have a couple of cracks in it as well, nothing unusual there, but I didn't mind that um, because it's supposed to look old So um, at the end, so if it's got a few cracks, what does it matter? There we go. Adds to the character. All right, adds to the Roberts. character. Wife says it wasn't a magnet. It wasn't a magnet. Oh. <coughs> Yeah, uh, probably right. Probably I never had a girlfriend. I was missold something. I wonder if I could sue. Miss Selling. Alright. There's our pot. Little copper pot. All in. Lovely. Right, that's the morning's demo over and done with. Hope you had a good weekend. See you next week. Only kidding. You haven't lost me yet. Right, so. Now. See, I've got to take that off of there. I'm going to get covered in paint. But. I'm not. Because I've got another chucks. I've got loads of chucks. That's why I have loads of chucks. Because I do stupid stuff like this. And think, what am I going to do now then? Well, what I'm going to do now then is I'm just going to knock that off of there. Get rid of this chuck. Oh. And we'll come back to this a bit later on. I do wrong, Rob. Get the other chuck, or a another chuck. See, you haven't missed anything because all my chucks are multicoloured. So you can't tell, they're in disguise. Give me that bit of ball. Right. So what we're going to mount is a bit of uh, sycamore. The base of that bit of wood was a bit of ash that I picked up. It doesn't matter. Sycamore, I think, burn textures better than ash. But for this, it doesn't matter because we're not trying to make uh oh, oh, no. Turn focus off, did you? no can you uh sort of focus out i was messing around trying to get the other camera we're still on auto focus so i'm just putting this blank onto a screw chuck blank's been mounted into the screw chucks mounted into the chuck and the blank mounts onto the screw chuck wind it on I'll just give it a tap because I want it as tight against the shoulder of the jaws as possible. Rock it over. Joe's on mess around with camera duty. That looks good. Right. So our blank is mounted on the screw chuck. You can see here we've got a bit of rubbish. Uh, and again, because this is... The idea is an ancient pot that's been dug up. I don't mind if that goes in away. I do mind if it goes click, click, bang, like last week. Because this is not destined to go click, click, bang. I've checked the blank and I think it's only a bit of surface. Lock the tool rest off. Turn her by hand to make sure she's turning nice and free. Not going to cause us any problems. Now, as per normal, when we're turning something like this, or turning anything, if you can bring your live centre up, 
Move the extractor head over a bit. To bring your live centre up for extra support, extra bit of security. Wherever you can, just bring her up. And it also gives us a centre mark that we're going to work to later on. I do oh, wrong, Rob. <laughs> Who said that? Mick Stratton? No, Malcolm Winder. Oh, Malcolm. Tut, tut. Right. So, today, we're going to start using these. This is the... Let's come on to another camera. you see it better. There. Um, this is a Simon Oak quick release system. Now... We got a better side camera there. Uh, quick release system. It's three handle lengths. But what's good about them is you can just release that off like that, bring it out, and it's a double ended gouge. So I can have a standard grind one end, long grind the other. I could have two long grinds, I could have whatever I like. There. So, and they just go in, quick twist, locked into place, and away we go. Let's come back to the uh, overhead here. So, speed down, green button, greens for on, turn the lever, and let's get a spin in. So we're at about 1,000 RPM here. The lathe's not bouncing, so it's a nice balanced piece of wood. Tool into my side, slide up, pick up the cut, and we'll just bring this plank into round so I'm just travelling along the tall rest did you suddenly hear that clicking now that's going to be a bit of this if you're turning and suddenly you hear clicking when you're not expecting to hear clicking always inspect your blank because we listen when we're turning as well as watching. I'm just travelling along to all rest here. No pressure, just let the cutting edge travel along. The wood's removed. Just try and keep a nice constant flow of shaving. There. Right, she's round. Now we'll start putting a bit of shape into the body. There. So I'm just going to come round the bottom. So I'm going to just pick the cut up. I can slide, slide the back of the bevel on. Let's go over it. No, that's the missing camera over it. Can you see that there? Not quite. You're already on over Sorry, I was looking at the screen. See what you can see. So I can rub the back of the bevel there, lean the handle forward, and as I lean forward, twist me right hip into the lathe. Trying to take a bit too much. Just raise the handle. That noise is a bit fierce on my behalf. I was just trying to rip a bit of wood away. Let's do it properly. And now just come back a bit further, lift and twist. Something sounds a bit wobbly. No, it's fine. So, back to there. Lift and a twist. See, we're starting to get our curve in here. Uh, we're going to put a mountain on the bottom. So now I'm going to do just one more that way. So 
Right around. Stop there. I'll make this me flat. Now if I shuffle along the lathe, I'm gonna just come back the other way, rub the back of the bevel. Now I twist away from the lathe, raise the angle as I go. And I'll start putting my curve in the other way. Somewhere there. Now these are quite big cuts because we get these real long shavings. But we're just removing a bit of wood. Right, so we're somewhere around there. We've got a rough shape coming in. I just want to get one more there. Somewhere there. We'll change it once it's in the chuck. I'm just trying to get a rough idea of my shape. Somewhere there. So we got our rough curving so we got a rounded bowl we're going to change that as i say once we go into the chuck and this is just getting the wood away purely so we can get on with the project now i want to just bring this bottom in a bit so i just come along here somewhere there Flattening this off, part of it will be a foot, and part of it's going to be our spigot. Just pushing the side of the bevel in, and I'm going to push the bottom under a bit more. Pull that curve round. I'll get an idea of my shape there. So now I can mark out, put my tool down somewhere safe. I can mark out if I can find my little vernier. What have I done with the vernier? Now I'll put it somewhere safe, right behind me. So my spigot is uh, 40, Two mil on this, so I go to about forty six. Left hand point scribe, right hand point away. There we go, just there. You see that? You didn't see that. There we go. So you can see that line. Left hand point scribe, right hand point line up the scribe line, and we're there. That's our spigot size. In with a skew to do the uh, dovetail. You could do it with a long grind gouge, just push in. My preferred way is the skew. Can you see this on the camera yet? So I just start up and it's like a peeling cut, push in, lifting the handle as I go, look on the opposite face, and when the wood joins the line, we're back there.
that the important bit is that shoulder's nice and flat so I'm just going to take a fine cut in now as I get into the bottom I raise my handle tilt my wrist anti-clockwise a little bit take any swarf out the middle and I can just flatten it off a little bit because I don't want too steep an angle and I'm just going to come in that top there make sure there's nothing going to sit up that's going to interfere with the chuck jaws now with me straight edge on here I can see where I'm at and I'm slightly concave so that means I've come in over it come in at this angle not quite as steep as that and I should have been square so I just now pick up this edge Make sure that the side of the tool is squared to the headstock. And it was just on the outside rim. So we should be there, there. Nice and flat where the jaws are going to sit. That's the important part. So, move the tailstock out of the way. Now, because I'm using a screw chuck, as I've said before, I don't remove my screw chucks until I know that I'm sitting properly in my jaws. Oop, can't undo the chuck. There we go. Never had me three shreddies this morning. Into there. Let's pinch that down on there. There we go. Now we're dealing on end grains, so I can tighten this spigot down as tight as I like there. It's not a nice bowl blank, is it? Ooh, hold on, that might be a bowl blank. So I shouldn't tighten down too hard. Quarter of a turn from hold up, quarter of a turn there. Thought I was dealing with end grain. Don't even know what bit of wood I've picked up. Turn my lathe speed down, turn her on. Make sure she's running true at the I'm only looking really in the jaws here. If it's running true there, it's fairly true there, but I'm going to change this a little bit in a moment. So that's good to go. Just check me chuck. Never over tighten a spigot on a bowl blank. If you go full Monty at it and you get a catch when the grain is running across the lathe bed it's like putting an axe down the wood and that's why sometimes they part company body to the spigot got me spanner let's get rid of our screw chuck because that's going to be in our way in a minute there we go so screw chuck out of the way now we're good to go really tool resting and now I can just modify this shape how I want uh, and I'm going to have a little collar on here quite like little collars on pops um, the other one had a sort of little concave collar uh, might do the same again here actually concave collar I'm just removing me elbow stabber because no one wants to see blood over me smock, do we? So, here we go. So we're there, we're in. We turn the lathe on. Turn the speed up. Now I'm just going to refine the shape into the chuck. So I just rub the back of the bevel. Pick me cut up. We're only spinning it about a thousand RPM here. Bring the curve right the way round to the base. And as I get into this part, what I do is I actually roll my wrist anti clockwise. It just gives me a little step under I can remove some of this waste here 
there's going to be a concave lip in a moment. So in there, great little undercut, uh, and then this bit of waste wood is me parting off area. Now, if we can hold on to this, that'll be quite smart for this sort of pot. When I saw the blank, I thought, oh, that might be handy because we can have a void in it. That'd be quite nice. So now I want to balance this curve up the other way. So I'm just going to pick up a little cut here. Around there. Just got my hand nice and low for a minute. I'm just shearing a little bit of this wood away. I'm looking at the horizon to see my shape. Now I'm just taking a real fine, sort of almost like a shear cut. So we've just got these real light floaty shavings coming off there. Real dusty sort of thing. Now I'm just going to pick up the back of my bevel, push round, pick up that cut line there, bring this around. about there now I look a little bit high just here so I'm just thin that down a little bit what I don't want is a load of torn grain the advantage of this doing these you don't have to do any sanding just the burning takes a while out there, a little bump there I think, let's get rid of that, this is real fine, I'll check this in a minute, that looks somewhere near my shape, what I'm going to do now is I want to put this concave rim on, so I'll just rub the back of the bevel and then twist away from the lathe while rolling my gouge over anti-clockwise that rim's going to be just a little bit too deep so I'll bring that a bit smaller to about there pick up the cut finish me curve little undercut and now I'm just going to pick up the edge of the cut handle towards the lathe as I get my cut twist away from the lathe twisting my wrist over so you can just see that gouge twisting anti-clockwise as we go in little twist there and now we've just got a little concaved lip rim on there so we've faced this off now and see what we think. Lock that down, lock that down, make sure my tool's going to come through on centre. Just in there, pick that up. As I come in here, I just raise my handle. As we go into there. What was that? Are they heavy? No, I think that's well balanced. I like... Let's come round to here. This is the longest handle, so it's about no, 22 inch. Uh, this is 3 8. I use 3 8 for 90% of my turning. I like 3 8. And this gouge is a 22 inch, so when I'm turning, I can have it along my forearm tucked into my side. And it just rests there. And if I do think I've got to push it, I just apply a little bit more pressure to my grip as I go around, so it enables me to rip wood away. You know, if I want to. When you're turning, when you're uh, turning for fun and uh, all the rest of it, when I was taught, I was taught every cut was a finishing cut. So we had it and we cut just under the tip and we sliced it around and sliced all the fibres 
so we didn't get any torn grain. Um, when I got going at turning, time's money, so you need to get the wood away at times, so push it away uh, so you can be to uh, where you want your shape and everything in no time at all. Then if you get a little bit of torn grain, you can just go back in with a real fine cut, two passes, maybe three passes, and that's it all tidied up. So um, that uh, lesson was when I spent a couple of days with uh, Mark Stanger, well, I spent four days with Mark Stanger, the second two were by accident. Um, and when I finished the project, you know, we were just talking about earning money out of turning, so you've got to be quick. And I'd always gentle, gentle, you know. Uh, and he said, show me how you turn a little rice bowl. So I showed him. And he said, I'll show you how to do it to earn some money. And he just got this gas, turned the lathe speed up and went vroom, vroom, vroom. And there was your shape. Well, I thought to myself, ha, ha, I'm going to have a go at that. So I did. Uh, as some of you will know from UKIS a few years ago, because I did a little demo there, speed turning a few rice bowls. Didn't go well. One of them went flying off the lathe, took out the ceiling light. But, oh yeah, things happen when you do stupid stuff like that. So it's not something you should do unless you're experienced with the tool in your hand. In my case, the experience is I am the tool and I've just got something in my hand. Only joking. Right, so now, forcing a bit. We're going to drill a hole. Whoops. Fatal mistake. Fatal mistake. Fatal mistake was... I didn't check how deep I want to drill this. I was just going to drill in. I would have stopped when I come to metal. So I am just about there. So I'm about here. Now I don't know where about here is, do I? So what I do with my bits, my drill bits, is I line it up, get the point back because I don't want the point coming through the bottom. I'm about there. I just put a felt line on. And I know where I'm to, and I've just dropped the cat to me felt pen. It's all right, I found it, no need to worry. So, leave the line so I can see it. Just bash the camera. Joe's messing around with some sort of something with the cameras, so I don't know what's going on. Turn the lathe speed down. Now these uh, cult bits you can drill pretty quick. So I'm drilling around about 800 RPM. Support the chuck. Don't support the teeth of the chuck. Now that's moved already. So just... Pull some might Just be a bit blunt. Should have sharpened it. I'll just support it till it's going. Holding it square on, there's about there. To be quite honest, I've got an extension in that I didn't need for this pot. Don't forget to wind it back out so you don't get trapped. Back the shavings out, otherwise they're blocking the back of the cutter. All I'm doing here is I just pull the tail stop back lock it back into place it's a bit quicker keep an eye on my line that's nearly at my line now the best idea press red red stop not green everybody uh, the best idea is just double check as you get near it. So I'm just off of three inches. And my pot is 
just over three inches so I can go down to my line. Um, always, always double check when you're drilling the depth because sometimes you get your measurements wrong. The old saying, measure twice, cut once. So I come in here and I'm just going to bring this in just down to my line. Just about there. Off. And now I've got my starting for me bit of hollowing. That out of the way. Now, because I've got a rotating head stock, I'm going to use it. I'm just going to rotate out to here. Let's move. What camera is it? That one. There we go. Makes life a lot easier rotating headstock. I've moved my camera. Joe's interfering now, moving it again. We could get rid of that top camera and just come on the side, couldn't we? Because that's not doing anything at all. So, what I want to create is a little shoulder in here for me lid. Doesn't matter where, but I just want a little shoulder for me lid. So, um, I'm just going to come in with a little skew. Raise the tool rest up a little bit. I want to be cutting on the centre here. There. And I'll just come in. Uh, probably leave a rim back there. Just take away some of this. Just raise the handle. Just down to the line. Thank you very much, Trevor. Line I've just made there. Thank you, Trevor. Very kind of you. I just want to flatten this top off so that my lid sits on there nicely. There, it's a little bit high there, I can see it. How to that? There. I don't need much of a shoulder for me lid to sit on. I'll make that just a tad deeper there. There, this bit's all going to come out, so there, we'll trim that up again in a minute. And now we can start hollowing. So, I've got my little Simon Oak carbide cutter thing here, drop the tool rest down. I want to cut at around about 7, 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock just here. And I tilt me cutter over to that. Now if I was going deep with a deep thing, I've got this bar. It's where the quick release system comes in handy because I can just pull that grip off and that one and just have a hollowing bar. Uh, I mean that camera's better for that, is it? Or that one? That one. I just have a hollowing bar. With the quick release system, I just release the gouge. Now, a thicker bar, so I take the blue head right off. There. <laughs> Wind on a red head. Mike's just said note to self. <laughs> Don't turn whilst watching Ed's live feed. Keeps your catches. <laughs> right, so then I can just lock that in. To the red head and then suddenly I've got a real nice deep hollowing tool I can probably go to around about mm, 18 inches with that there need the length for my lathe bed you see you got that there so but if I want a shorter one I'm just bring the hollowing tool back into the handle and I've got a short hollowing tool with my arm against it so we're there, one camera, that camera. So, turn the speed up a bit, let's onk a bit of this wood away. 
Now all I'm doing is kicking that cutter up and just rocking my body over. Rocking my body over, that makes no sense whatever. I'm tilting my right hip into my lay bed. Feeding the tool a few mil further forward each time, just letting it slide through my fingers. So I'm going to come to my line so now I can come back a bit more. As per normal, everything's in my way, towel stock and everything. So if I stop the lathe, we might adjust the camera. Let me just bring that out a little bit further. Got to be careful with my headstock because I removed the safety clip. So my headstock could come right off the lathe. Not the brightest thing in the world. But I was trying to get the maximum between centres. I've got to do a flagpole for someone. So what I'm going to have to do is put two extension beds on, one at one end, one at the other, and then I should be there. Uh, now, yeah, we can still see that. I have got a bit more room to get in here. I want to just come down to my line, which is about there. What I'm going to do is use the hook tool, the hooky tip one, because I want to get obviously a deep undercut in here. Clogging up a bit on the shavings. So stop the lathe, get rid of the shavings out of there. Either use a super vac or whatever you want, but just get the shavings. Don't let them clog your tool up, otherwise it will just catch you and bring you round. I'll come back in. I'll come back in with a straight tool. Go a bit deeper. Let's pick up that hole. There. Yeah. Once you get going, you know where that step bow is, you're not refinding it. There. Come back to the hooky tool because I'll get more of an undercut. Oh, remove shavings again. They soon build up in here. A lot of people don't realise those little 6mm carbide cutters can really rip some wood away really quickly. Back into there. Oh, um, I'm going to say no, Steve. What's that? And you said, if you have a fixed head stop, is it safe to hollow when you're standing on the other side of the road? Uh, if you've got a fixed headstock, is it safe to hollow standing on the other side of the lathe? That's the way the wood's coming, if it... If, no, it's still spinning away from you. So if you're standing, what you're saying is we're hollowing here with well, no, fixed headstock. That way and I'm hollowing this side, it's still coming that way. It's coming right. into me. No, it's... Not away, then, You're trying to cut on the nine o'clock side while standing on the opposite side of the lathe. Your problem would be 
you've got your body then between your lathe bed and your piece, so you'd be too far out. If you're left-handed, I suppose it would work. Uh, okay. Um, but if you've got a fixed headstock, the easiest way to hollow is to remove, if you can get to the end of your lathe, remove the towel stock um, and then hollow down the bed rather than uh, and that works quite well it's just with a rotating head stock i virtually everything i do is probably the biggest feature on these modern lathes that i use the variable speed and rotating head stock uh it just makes life easy especially with these cameras Um, now, there are some people that rotate on the opposite face, turn the lathe into reverse to hollow. Um, now, if you ever attempt to do that, the reason they do it is because they think they can see the opposite wall where they're cutting them. People get hung up on, you've got to see where your cutter's cutting. You can see exactly where your cutter's cutting. If you're looking down, you can see your cut lines. You don't actually have to see the cutter, but... Should you do that, you need a chuck that has a grub screw on the collar of it and you do the grub screws up so they clamp down onto the spindle. Because if you get a catch in reverse, one thing's going to happen, the chuck's going to come undone. Not only then have you got a piece of wood flying across your workshop, you've got a weighty piece of metal. So, if you, there are, and I've seen a few people do it, hollering on this face, in reverse because the wood's got to turn that way because the wood's got to come down onto the cutter if you do that only attempt it if you've got grub screws so you can screw your chuck down and lock it onto the spindle if you don't there's a danger the chuck will come unwound and if it comes unwound you've got a, a serious serious weapon flying across the room uh and flying at you potentially so not highly advisable but people do do it um but you don't need to see the cutter you know if you've got a big enough opening you can look at that face while you're cutting you don't have to look at the wood so while i'm doing this i'm looking at my screen i can see the chat mick stratton ed how's those six mil Hope cutters for a fiver this summer. Mick Stratton, it's a fiver to you and 20 quid delivery. How's that? And don't say you'll come and pick them up. You're not welcome. <laughs> Mike Walk told me to say that. Sorry, Mike. Only joking, Mick. So, let me just bring this around. Just tidying this front up. That noise is me, too much pressure. So I would just carry on like that till I get me pot nice and hollow to where I want it. At the moment, I should think we're about 15 mil or so. Let me check. Um, I would normally take them down something like this. You can take them down fine, but the problem with going fine, especially when you have a burn texture heavily, is they become very brittle. Uh, and if you drop it, you've lost your pot. But it all depends what you're doing it for. So there, we're 15. We're thick in the middle there uh, and thick at the bottom. So we'll take a bit out the middle. The real thing is you want a nice even wall thickness. So I just come in here, you see me shoulder for a minute.
Now what's happening is I'm presenting the cutter slightly round because I've got cameras on my shoulder. So I can't get my body round as far as I would like. I could rotate my headstock out further. But we'll get there. So that's why I'm sort of fighting with the cutter. So realistically I want to be more here. You can see what happens if I'm more there. That's what I mean. If I'm more there where I need to be, you get a nice picture of my shoulder, of my smock. So, hence why I'm sort of trying to do it so you can see with the camera. Um, and that then has its own problems because the cut is being presented to the wood at the wrong angle. Uh, so, we just get there. So, I'm down to my depth. Oh, I'm down in the side. I've just ripped away a bit of that side. A bit more to go. What I'm going to try and do... Uh, am I, I was wondering if I could expose the holes another feature. We'll give it a little couple of more goes. Talk amongst yourself. And see how quickly, once you apply a bit of cutter to the wood, these shavings come away. I keep moving my body and the camera. Oh, well, I've knocked the camera now. There. Well, there was a whole pile of shavings. Trust me. A lot. So, we've got that. So, we would carry on hollowing. I'm not going to get down to go through there. I'm going to have to mess around and it will all get a bit boring and you won't see the paint going on and see the effect and da 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 da. I've just got a ridge just there that I want to get rid of. I can feel it. I don't like ridges. Oh, I was going to push the old camera button. Yes, to oh. now my cutter at the bottom of the box just off the center so it chucks the thing back so I don't want to do that I want to pick it up on center just come through gently Get the cut on. That's better. I can feel the ridges gone now. Red stop. So the ridge is gone. Yeah, ridge is gone. And there, so I'm going to just tidy this entrance up and get this flat. We're around about 15 mil thick now. Bit thick for a pot, but yeah. We're fairly even. Maybe a little bit thinner at the top there, but uh, for the sake of the demo doing this, uh, I'll just stop about there. We've already done fin turning, so we don't want that today. Uh, and I'm just going to tidy up this flat. So my lid will sit on there. I'm just going to come in there. And tidy that up. That looks good. That'll do. That'll do. Do for me today. So, there's our pot. Um, now, if you were going to do one of these properly, oh, me, uh, glasses are tangled up around my neck. 
Uh, I'm gonna do one of these properly. If you've got a feature like this, what I would do is I'd try and peel that bit of bark out of there uh, and go so I had a void going through, you know, because it's just another feature you can see. So I've got my pot and my grain's all right. So then I could burn me pot or I could do me lid. Whichever way round, it doesn't much matter. Um, what we'll do is we'll do our lid to our pot, I think. So I'm going to bring this back to line up. Move me tool out of the way. Take this... Um, out of the chuck actually i'm going to take the chuck off just to line the headstock back up whenever you go rotating headstock mode it's best just to line the towel stock and the headstock back up shavings there live center in overhead and then tail stock comes up oh, someone's got super glue on my lathe bed and not cleaned it off little job for later Lock off your towel stock, wind your quill with your live centre into the morse taper of your spindle, rock your head stock round so it's all sitting on there firm, head butted the top camera, I need harder, I don't know about anything else in here, uh, and then I know that that's all lined up again now, so that's as simple as that, that one out of the way, want me chuck back, take me pot out of the chuck, do, 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 do. Put out the chuck, chuck back on the lathe. There, so we we'll put our pot to one side. Now, what I've done is I've pre drilled cameras there a 50 mil forcing a bit hole in there just to grip this on the chuck quickly I do that quite a lot with small blanks again this was a I was cutting a load of blanks uh, last week so this morning I spent half hour tidying them there was all along me bench on the back there where my sign is uh, and as I come down this morning I thought oh no I've got to move all them Joe was asleep, so I had to lug them all about myself. Unbelievable. Um, so, I'm bring the towel stock into play again, into there. Uh, tool rest up, and I'll just bring her into round. I've got the tool rest right where the super glue is. Always clean your lathe bed. I've got a little job in a bit. Turn it by hand, make sure she's going to turn free. She's free, lock that down, lock that down. Safety glasses on. Now, I say safety glasses, it should be face shield on. I'm just going to wind the red head off of this uh, quick release. Yeah, get rid of that hollering tool. We don't need that anymore. Back to our bowl gouge. Lock that down there. Right, turn it on for the first time. So speed down, turn it on. Turn it up slowly, make sure she's running all right. She's all right. And now we're just going to bring this to round. Just follow the tool rest along. There. Right, we're round. 
Now we're just going to face the blank off. Well, I want to make this piece of wood fit the other piece of wood. There's a lid. So I've got to make sure the face of this is flat. Just rub the side bevel. And as I come into the centre, just lift my handle. And use the back of my dash to see I'm flat. A little rise just about there. Somewhere there. Get rid of me nasty pointy thing. I just laid the laid the gouge. You probably never saw that on the lathe bed, rather than dropped it into the little slots that I've got underneath the lathe bed, and it decided to fall back onto the floor. Miss me, but um, the. Wiggle woggle on the back side will need turning, won't it? The wiggle woggle? I haven't got a clue. What do you mean Nodule. wiggle woggle? Do you mean the little nodule for a handle? Is that what you mean by wiggle woggle? Let's finish that base off there. We're going to turn the lid with a wiggle woggle or a handle, whichever you want to call it. So, now what I want to know is overhead. You're still on overhead. Am I? Yeah, you are on it. I was on overhead. I'm not going to really get this. Move, move the camera. Right. So what I want to know now is what size bung I want on here that's going to sit inside here. So I just use the caliper, move it around. Find the centre point, which is about there. Don't matter what it is. As long as I can mark it. I'll just bring me tool rest up to rest my hand on. So again, left hand point. But this is crucial now that that left hand point scribes that line on the right hand point. So it lines up completely. Once you've got it lined up completely, give the left hand point a push in, and that should be the size of our plug that goes into our hole. Should be. So I'm just going to get me bowl gouge now and Gary, take a bit of waste Gary, wood down. Gary said he thinks Maggie means the untrue end. The untrue end attached to the chuck. Oh, is it because it's wavy? Oh, it's wavy at this end. The reason it looks wavy at this end is the face of this blank is not trued off. But I'm not worried about that. That is just going to be a piece of waste wood in a moment, you'll see. What I'm concerned about is this face here and this bit here. I'm just making a lid. So now I'm just going to cut in. Somewhere there. Add some shavings. Ready? you feel like you was in your workshop didn't it right all I've done there is removed a bit of waste wood now why was I using such a big blank because it had a nasty bit out of here scrap wood really so I'm just making use of a bit of scrap wood 
But now we take things a tad more seriously because I've got to get this to fit the pot. Got a lot of wood to mess around with so I can make a few mistakes. But So I'm just going to come in with me skew here. Bit like cutting the spigot. Just get her down to my line. There. She's nowhere near deep enough yet. Just make sure that's flat. Out there. Roughly down to my line. Now this should be too big for me pot. Oh. Now see I've got this loose fibre here that's going to interfere so let's clear that off and just clear that off with a tip and what I can do is just come in and shave that down so it's a little bit of a taper not a lot, not a lot and we're just a bit too big you see uh, let's come back over red so we're a bit too big there which I knew we would be, um, but now we start taking little bits, just a tad at a time. So I can come in this way now, and this is where I need glasses. What I need is safety glasses that are magnified, like reading glasses. So just putting a pair of glasses on so I can see where I'm at. I can see where my line is, so I'm just going to take off. Back that off. A fine bit, real fine cut. Bring this back, stop the lathe, and see where we're at. Not quite. We're just rocking on the chamfer, so we're not far off. So we're coming. Glasses down so I can see what I'm doing of. And I'm just going to take... Fine cut. And it's so easy to get this loose at this point. Not quite. It's holding on the chamfer. There. No hands. But it's not quite. It's too tight. So it needs another cut of the cuts now. It's far better just to take your time here. And you have to do a real fine cut. Bring this back, try this one. I think we should be getting close now. So we're now just getting on. So the chamfer's going in and just not on it quite. The chamfer's now loose, so I can lose the chamfer now. So I'll just face this off the chamfer. Use my bowl gouge, just a very light take that chance for a bit off let's get rid of that see where we sit now there and we're about there so that's our chamfer for our lid and our lid sits on the pot just how we want it, with a little pop. So now we'll start removing a bit of this waste wood to create our lid. There's loads of ways of doing this, that's just one of the ways I do it. So I know my lid has got to be just a bit wider than that uh, chamfer. I don't need me x-ray specs now, I can go over to meet that safety glasses 
and I can just remove some of this wood down there. I can push it away. Just got to be careful I don't push into the shut. There. So now I'll come back the other way. Somewhere there. So what I'm going to do now is start cutting in. So I just pick up a cut and twist my right it into the lathe. Then I'll pick up a cut and twist my right it away from the lathe, just like cutting a code. And then I'll come back in on this side, push in. And as I come in, I just roll my wrist anti-clockwise in that direction. Back of the bevel, lean forward, pick up the cut, push in, roll my wrist clockwise. I'm making a cotton reel. I've made me little cotton reel here. And that's how you make a goblet. And now I want to start messing around, fine tuning this lid. Now I can have the lid whatever shape I want, uh, but I want something to look, you know, how I want it. Uh, I've got about a quarter of an inch to come down here. I could put the pot on. If I didn't have a flange, I could put the pot on. I could do that anyway. Put the pot on, bring the towel stock up and turn the lid to the pot. What I'm going to do is just bring this around. That noise there. It's probably the tool getting a little blunt. Uh, I'll probably start now. I'm pushing it a bit. Let's see if we can get away with it for a second. Somewhere there. And I'm just going to bring this back this way. and tune that in there right this tool's getting a bit warm so probably just a tad blunt I'll sharpen it in just a second just check this on there yeah we've got about an eighth for an inch to come down let me just sharpen the tool when we uh, get the other cut the cameras I'm going to have another arm so when I walk round to the sharpening system I can just flick the camera over so you can see this bit. At this moment in time, you can't see this bit. Shay just said if you had some more, you could make a yo-yo. A yo-yo, yeah. We could make a yo-yo. From that shape. Yes, you could. 
not going to even make the lid. So, just a quick swipe on the old pro edge. That's just done. I'm on my way back. It should be nice and sharp now. Unlike me, I'm not very sharp. So just bring me tool rest in. I just want to take a little bit off of there. See how much better that cuts now. I'll bring this back here. Brush that down a bit. Yes, come in there. I'll sort me lid out, out in a minute. I just want to get down to the size that I want. Yeah. I think something like that will do me. That's what I did on the other pot. Something like that. So there's me lid shape now. Unfortunately, I've got some pith running through this bit of sycamore right where I want to get what will be the uh, knob. Uh, I want a parting tool, parting tool, and I want to chuck this on the other leg. You'll see why in just a second. I was using this last night, so let me just get that chuck off while I'm over here. Parting tool there. Right. Now, what I could do is cut the uh, step, the shoulder on the pot to a size that this set of jaws would pick up on this little uh, piece here. Because I'm just going to use that to grip onto. But I didn't, and I don't. So I'm just going to part into here. Just gently. Turn the speed down a little bit. I want to save this bit. You can't see what's gone on there because my arm was in the way. I just wanted to part this bit off. That's the bit I want. I just stood it on the lathe bed, but dropped it through the bed files. I didn't do it on purpose. Looks like Christmas in here, on New Year's Eve on the cameras. There's streamers all over them. More fun when it's wet shaving. Let's get rid of that. We don't need that. So what I've done is because I've cut the little recess in to the size that I have. I know from last night it doesn't fit these jaws. So um, what I could do if I've got one chuck and I want that size is change my jaw set. If I've got another jaw set, if I just want to work on a 50 mil jaw set, then I make that 60 mil say. Turned a dry inch, uh, sorry, turned a dry 12 inch elm blank yesterday and could not keep it running true for love nor money. Uh, is it me or is it, or is elm notorious? Uh, it could be the elm. Elm is notorious for moving. Um, it, it, elm, depending on how dry it is, you can have the driest piece of elm in the world. Because the fibres are so wild and the grain's so wild, as you cut the wood, it can release the tension in the fibres and it can move on you. Um, and that's just elm, you know. You're probably far better off rough turning it, even though it's dry, and leaving it for a couple of days. Take it off the lathe, leave it in the chuck, take it off for a couple of days and then put it back on. 
but it may just move and move some more on you. So what I'm doing now is just I've come over to another chuck with bigger jaw set. Uh, just pinch down. Now I don't want to crush that. I just want it pinched down. I don't need anything heavy here. I'm just going to take a few light cuts. Bring this pot lid round a bit with a spindle gouge. There. Now, if I was using the quick release system, uh, I could just release this gouge and come over to a little double-ended spindle gouge, okay? Uh, but I would like a short randle for my spindle gouge. And as I haven't got a short randle out, I'm just going to revert to a good old handle spindle gouge. You can find one. I have one here somewhere. Buried amongst the mid. Since I've been doing this, I seem to have lost so many tools. I haven't lost them, lost them. I just put them back in different places to what I'm used to. I must come over here as a spindle gouge. You do it as a jam chuck. You could do it as a jam chuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just this is the way I was messing around with it. So what I'm going to do now is just come in, get this, what will be the knob of the bowl down. It's too big. Let's just chop down on that a bit. So I'm just rubbing the back of the bevel with spindle guards, twisting my body into a lathe, and then generating a cove there, somewhere there. So as I twist in then, I'm just rolling my wrist anti-clockwise, bring it down into there, and I'm just going to bring this top round. I just want to stop the lathe and check this pith. Make sure we're solid. Yeah, we're solid enough. So I'm just putting in, so I come in, pick up the back of the bevel, come in round, twist into the lathe, into the lathe, into the lathe, into the lathe. Start twisting away from the lathe, roll my wrist open, and get a bit of a cove in there and then do the same the other way bit of a cove and now I'm just going around the top over so it's like rolling the bead back of the bevel lift and twist my wrist clockwise into the middle there, something like that. Uh, it doesn't matter really how you do this. You can have whatever you want on the top here. You can go to something a bit more ornate. Uh, you can do whatever you want. So there's our little lid. That will sit on our little pot. So I'll show you the process for the next part, but I'm not going to bore you to tears with it because, as I say, last night it took me an hour just doing that little pot. But the idea now is just to show you what we do and then we're going to go back, if you remember. I know some of you, the old memory's going nowadays, but if you remember, back to the beginning of the demo we painted a pre-turned pot copper pin up there so what you need to do if you're going to do this you need to now completely clean up all the shavings okay uh, because they are a fire hazard for what we're about to do. Oh, safety glasses are trying to strangle me this morning. 
So here I've got a heavy duty pyro machine. We've used this before. This is from uh, Wood Art Products. Uh, it's far more powerful than the Peter Charles pyro machines. And um, the Peter Charles work for this process, just to prove I had a face shield, I've just knocked it on the floor. Uh, the Peter Charles work for this process, but they take longer because they don't get as hot. Uh, but they've got far more subtle on what we're doing. But there's our pot in the camera. There. See the lid holds on or not. I'll take the blue tack out in a minute. So if I turn the pyro on, you want uh, to get away from the smoke. So I've actually got a smoke extractor. Let me show you that if anybody's watching not seen it before it's got a little uh, charcoal filter in it let's bring that into shot there so it's got a little charcoal filter on it on legs and that will draw the smoke away from me uh, and that's what I would normally have on um, but for the sake of time we're not going to do that and then literally I start burning and I keep burning and burning and burning all the way around the pot, the lid, the handle, everywhere. And it don't matter, I start in random areas, so I'll say start here, then I'll come over here to start. And sometimes I push in harder so I get a bigger indent. And then I might come over to here. And then slowly but surely, I'll join all stop this together. Eh? Hey? So will you stop moving the work? Joe's right. moaning because I keep moving the work around. I use cameras to get the right angles for you. And you keep going, I'm going to move it in now. We need widescreen. Right. So... Everybody happy with that? You've got the idea? We have to wait 20 seconds for a response. Uh, this is only the small uh, stream deck, Gary. Um, when I got it, I was talking to Martin about them. Uh, and he said, oh, what a great idea. And off he went. And he bought the small one. Then I think he went medium. Now he's gone mega big. But this, I can swap. I've got four cameras. From this, I've got uh, three, six, nine, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen buttons. So I can swap from cameras. I can swap microphones. I can put camera in camera. I, you know, you can go deeper. Each button can be a folder for a whole array of things if you want to program it up. And I literally use two, four, six, eight buttons, uh, and that runs four cameras quite sufficiently. So. Um, yeah, you know, I think the small one works fine. And yes, it is OBS that we use. Yeah, OBS. Yeah, OBS with this. And there is a work round. I've been looking at it on YouTube to connect OBS into Zoom with your Stream Deck. Uh, and that's something I'll be doing in the near future. Not done at the moment because broadband's no good. Um, so I would go all the way round the pot until it's burnt textured all the way round. What are you after? No, I was doing this. I'm trying to work out whether you want the overhead, the side, you keep moving it. Oh, we're going to go back over here. So, let's get rid of the burning machine. Sorry, I've just walked over, put it up out of the way because the tip's hot and I don't want it dangling down and burning anything. If I find our little gold pot from earlier, so that's been burnt textured, you saw it this morning, all the way over until I've covered it all and there this morning we used the copper paint on here. What we're going to do now is repaint, normally I try and finish by half eleven, sorry we're running on a bit today, I should have turned quicker, should have less talking, turn quicker. So. 
I now give it a second coat of copper. Just get it on here real quick. Uh, Mike's asked what make is it, the Stream Deck? Uh, Elgado. Elgado Stream Deck. Uh, I watched uh, the interview with um, Andrew Hall the other evening and uh, Andrew and a few of the others are using another thing, uh, Apex or Ace. I've got the name jotted down. Uh, and they program them up uh, so you can switch from camera to camera. But they're about 300 and or 400 quid, something like that. Where a little stream deck there is about 140 quid. Um, and I think the stream deck works fine. So I can't see me changing from the stream deck. It does everything that I want switches the cameras what i will do is i've got and um, this martin told me about this i bought um a couple of logitech 920s martin said they were the best sort of camera to use for what us guys are trying to do with this live streaming live demoing sort of stuff um so i had two 920s and i, I couldn't the atom pro which is about 600 quid atom pro right um so i got a couple of 920s not been able to get any more and i bought a huddle because i could get that in the beginning uh that thing has got no zoom on it it's Useless. got no control over it it's all right if you're just going to do a fixed thing so we've got that on and i bought an app for my iphone to run the iphone as a, a um, camera on obs and to be quite honest, that's not been that successful. It gives a lovely picture when it works. But every now and again, for some reason, I've spoke to the guy that produces the app. The app wasn't there. Um, but what happens is it doesn't see. It says waiting for USB connection. It's all plugged in. You do it on a cable. And I've tried it and tried it. Um, so... Webcams are now coming back into stock. Uh, and I've been looking at it and there's a thing called a Logitech Stream Cam or Cam Stream, Cam Stream I think it is. Um, so I'm going to get a couple of those with the 920s uh, and then we'll have no more messing around. So what I've done is I've quickly given this a second coat of copper and then we use this. Where's the camera? There. This is an activator. Now it's um, caustic. Is that the right word? It rusts things up. So be careful. It's acid based. And then we just give this pot a spray. Yeah. It rusts things up over your chuck. <coughs> Yeah, and then what will happen if by magic You're this like will start to activate with the copper paint uh, if I find my thing here it takes a few minutes just to activate <laughs> takes a few minutes and they, you've got to let the first layer of paint dry for about an hour or so um, and then this coat it will start to go quite quickly he says fingers crossed um, I mean you you wait for the true effect for up to an hour but I'll just take that off of there. Let it run down a bit. Uh, and what this is doing is activated and it gives you a uh, verdigris. verdigris pattern. 
over it and it can be really effective. Now, while that's doing that, hold on a second. I'm going wandering to grab a pre-done piece. Because this might not happen as quick as we want it to happen. You said as if by magic, this is the world's slowest magic trick. It, I can, from here, I can already see it starting to turn green in areas. But what will happen... Uh, where are we, overhead? Yeah. Right, I have to lift that up. Lift that up. I'm having to lift the camera up because the camera that I normally have on me is... Um, hello, I'm back. Uh, the camera I normally have on me is the iphone the iphone ain't working we've had that discussion um but what will happen with the pot is this as it dries it goes a sort of powdery green and you get that effect so this little pot was all burnt textured underneath uh this is done properly thin you know three mil or so uh and you get this Catina over the pot and you get areas where it doesn't go so you get this sort of artifacts looking pot there now this one we've done is slowly going green uh, it's going to take a little longer than I anticipated so obviously once it's dried and gone green I'll post that on Facebook but that's the effect that you will get with this now as I say there's another paint uh, out there that I'm going to mess around with that's supposed to do the similar sort of thing I've not used it yet um, but it gives a real good effect and you can get metal so you get rusty metal uh, all sorts of stuff uh, this is a copper they do a brass that will go green so on and so forth so that is our pot if I twist the camera down you may be able to see whoop, he's in that in there Joe you should be able to see it going green now so we've got green slowly happening here around the pot so it's slowly changing it sort of changes in front of your eyes but in front of your eyes is probably another 10 minutes to really start seeing the effect but that's how it works uh, as I say I'll put the picture up on Facebook later uh, Garden of England members I can put a picture up if you don't oh yeah that won't work I can put a picture out on the whatsapp stuff and stuff so you can see it but that's Facebook. it Facebook Facebook but if they see the picture on Facebook then they're already on Facebook you said WhatsApp yeah we've got a WhatsApp group oh. Garden of England I'll put it everywhere so anybody watching will be able to see it uh, so there's our little pot it's going greener and greener as we speak getting mouldier and mouldier and that's how we do our ancient artifacts uh, what you can do if you really want to get into this is sell them to the British Museum. Is go on to the web and look up the ancient sort of little sugar pots that they had and salt pots and stuff, and then turn something to that shape and take notice of the handle and you know really make it uh, there. What you can also do with it is carve bits out of it, but make it straight as if it's cracked. Um, so you can do loads, but if you've got nice split wood. It's a good way to use up split wood because you want the cracks and, you know, it's supposed to look like it's been in the ground a couple of hundred years, a couple of thousand years, 10,000 years, whatever really. It's supposed to look like it's been in the ground a while. Um, so there's this morning's demo. We've had a quick look at the Simon Oak uh, quick release with gouges. Um, there's loads of other bits and pieces that can go with that. So if anybody wants to see them, I'll quite happily show you uh, if Thanks, Pat. anybody uh, has got any questions. Thank you very much, Pat. It's very kind of you. Uh, if anybody's got any questions, 
Uh, far away, Gary, if you want to know any more about my setup with my stream deck and the cameras and that, just drop us a message or give us a call or something. I'll quite, hope, well, hopefully, I will quite happily talk you through it because we went with a different type of microphone, which is much better. We've got a gantry system. I can send you over some pictures if you want to see it. Yeah, if you... We could just move a camera. Um, ideally... If you're doing this, you need a little helper um, because it's quite awkward to move cameras, talk, ask questions. With Joe here, he shouts out if there's any questions that I can answer because concentrating on what you're doing and looking at the screen is something else. Um, so there's a few things that I would do differently, different size monitor, uh, Mount it in a different way so I can just look up and carry on. You can ask Mike Walt about that. He does his on his own. Mike's back on Sunday night. Uh, computer gods willing. Last week he had a com internet dependent. complete failure with his uh, connection. He's had two failures today during this demo. Uh, Mike's had two failures today during the demo. I think he dropped out like twice. Oh, Mike dropped out. I thought he was turning at the same time. <laughs> right. So, thanks everybody for coming. If anybody... Uh... Oh, look at this. Now, we'll... Let's show you on there. You can see how quickly that's changing just while I'm waffling on. You get the powdery effect when it dries out, but straight away, you can see... The effect. But can if you hold it near a camera. Can if I hold it near a camera. So that looks almost green. You come round here and you've got the copper underneath. So when that's dried out, that that will work quite well. Uh, it's going to take a while, crocodile. So. Uh, the corrosive I don't. Yeah, the corrosive on. It's got to be this reactive paint. I don't know that... I've never tried it on just a pure gold paint or something, but you, you have to put a coat of paint on, let it dry, put a second <coughs> coat on, and then the activator. So I don't know... I would assume there's a chemical to make it activate in the paint. Uh, that's the way it goes. Cheers, Malcolm. Thanks for stopping by. Cheers, Steve. Glad you enjoyed it. Cheers, Brian. Glad you enjoyed it. Cheers, Mike. A tester after this to see if it's stable. There's nothing stable in your house, Mike. Not even you. Thank you, Colin. Glad you enjoyed yourself. Cheers, Paul. Glad you've enjoyed it. Have I uh, explained it well enough for you? Cheers, James. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks, Derek. Glad you've enjoyed it. Thanks, Derek. Glad you've enjoyed it. It's good stuff. Nice of you to pop by. They only work if you guys come along, so... Oh, top of my head, evidently. Cheers, Jack. I was leaning forward so I could see the screen. I've got tools in my back. Um, cheers, Paul. Thank you. If uh, any of you are still here, just hit the like button. Thank you. Subscribe to the channel. That would be great. Helps us out. Helps me promote... Oliver's wood turning and me as a wood turner and all that sort of stuff. The more likes you get, more subscribes you get, the more YouTube will show it to other people and the word spreads. So we're trying to spread the word. Cheers, Steve. Thank you. Clyde, thank you for popping by. Thanks, Martin. Cheers, Colin. Glad you found it interesting. Cheers, Shay. Take care. No, Michael, I don't have the reactive paint. If something Martin bought in about three years ago, he stopped. 
I am thinking about contact and it comes from America. But I am going to play with this other paint first because I think I can get that quicker. But I am planning to stock a reactive paint in the not too distant future. Done and done. Cheers, Sid. Maria, thank you. Glad you found it interesting. Our key 70 likes. We had over 200 people watching. Only 70 people liked it. Cheers, Gary. Yeah, just give us a shout, mate. I'll tell you what I've done. Martin will tell you what he's done. You know, uh, I'm sure Mike would help you as well. Uh, there's loads of little tweaks, but I've been tweaking with this a while. But decent webcams, definitely. Decent ones of a Zoom function. Uh, can I remember what demo I did? It was about five weeks ago, the beading tool. I can add a beading tool in next week. Cheers, Nick. Glad you enjoyed it. Cheers, Ben. You've missed the first 20 minutes. That was the best bit. I love you, Ben. The video stays up, don't worry. How do you finish? Trevor, you just let it dry out. That's it done. Uh, it's wet at the moment. And as it dries, it gets this powdery type finish to it where's the camera powdery and that's it no finish over the top or anything it's just letting the metal reactive paint do its thing thanks maggie thanks for stopping by glad you found it interesting thank you malcolm no at the moment malcolm i don't stock a metal reactive paint are you saying please do I mean, oh it? please do sorry yeah i will be doing it um the paints are slow moving but we we've geared with golden artist uh for the colors chestnut stuff uh and i'm going to get into metal reactive paints and a few other things that i'm working with um that will come to the fore once I know how they work and I'm happy with them and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Cheers, Derek. Yes, Trevor, next week. Same time, same place, same channel. That was TV programme as well, wasn't it? Same time, same place, same channel. We'll be back. That was Schwarzenegger. Um, we will be back, yes. We'll do something, I don't know quite what at the moment, but something will come to mind. Cheers, Richard. Thanks for popping by. Glad you enjoyed it. I never got covered in paint this week, so that was a bonus for me. Joe never got covered in paint. That was a bonus for him. We will get covered in paint when it stops raining because we're going to go glossing. Cheers, Neil. Use your beading tool for the first time. Got some breakout. Just gently. And I rock mine side to side, you know, left to right as I go and lift gently. Cheers, Fred. Glad you enjoyed it. Right, chaps, the chat seems to be slowing down, so I'm going for a well-deserved cup of tea. Thank you all for coming. Don't forget it, like and subscribe. Uh, Mike walks on tomorrow at 7.30. Uh, internet God's fairing. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks. Glad you enjoyed it. Um, I shall see you in a week's time, if not before. Take care. Good day.